It's all about having the key insights, following the leaders of the crypto industry and background stories on blockchain technology trends to keep you one step ahead. Monty Metzger, CEO of LCX.com, keeps you up to speed with what's moving global crypto markets and gives you the latest insights about LCX's platform and ecosystem. This is LCX Insights Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this special LCX Insights Live. We are here on this Wednesday afternoon at a live show, live on Twitter, LinkedIn, and on YouTube. And we are waiting for all your questions as well. In these live shows, I'm engaging with the world's top blockchain projects, entrepreneurs, investors, and pioneers in crypto and blockchain industry in honest conversations meant to challenge traditional ways of thinking. My name is Monty Metzger. I'm founder and CEO at LCX. LCX is a regulated fintech company that focuses on digital asset trading and uh, tokenization and compliant token offerings, which we are going to speak a lot about today. LCX is headquartered in Liechtenstein. That's why we have the L in the name. And Liechtenstein is a country next to Switzerland and Austria in the middle of Europe and has received a triple A rating at Standard & Poor's. That's the highest rating a country can get. So it has a very high reputation and it is also very innovative because Liechtenstein has introduced the most forward thinking legal framework for cryptocurrencies and blockchain companies providing legal clarity and security for our LCX users. Uh, and we can do that because LCX has received eight blockchain related approvals by the Liechtenstein regulator. That's more than any other country, uh, any other company in the country. And this includes especially the role as a token issuer where we can handle the whole initial token offering or initial coin offering on behalf of projects. Today's show, it's all about NFT Maker and the NMKR token. And we have a special, very special guest today. He's the founder and CEO of NFT Maker. I'm very proud to welcome him here. Welcome, Patrick Tobla. Where are you? Here you are. Hey, nice to be, uh, to be here and thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a wonderful day here in Berlin. The weather is very rainy, but I'm still glad to be a part of this show. Perfect. Yeah, I'm uh, also happy that you joined the L6 Insights Live and the audience is thrilled and excited to learn more about uh, NFT Maker. When I uh, today I tweeted about your um, token sale and the road that NFT Maker is building this ecosystem around NFTs on Cardano, which means minting NFTs is made so simple. You can um, create them, mint them, sell them. There's a marketplace and everything. But how would you describe NFT Maker? What is NFT Maker? Can you describe it to us? Yeah, I think I think you described it very well. We are building an NFT ecosystem uh, on Cardano, not only on Cardano, but also blockchain agnostic. But we we started with Cardano. In fact, we were uh, the first real project doing NFTs on Cardano and doing NFT minting on Cardano. Um, we actually celebrated our first birthday two days ago. So you know, exactly one year and two days ago, we launched NFT Maker version one. And it was basically an overnight success because there are a lot of lot of users on Cardano, a lot of people on Cardano, not that much to do yet. Um, and it has grown tremendously in the last year, but we basically try to enable artists and try to make NFTs accessible for, for people um, outside of the NFT space, but also inside the NFT space, of course. And uh, since we are the first, first big project there on Cardano, it has been an absolutely amazing journey and we're now on the road to minting 1 million nfts in total in in a little less than a year so um i'm very proud about that and now we like our plans for the future are essentially to to expand this vision we started with a minting service we started with uh, building a tool to mint really large collections um, and now we want to want to make this even bigger. We want to build a secondary market. We want to in expand into different blockchains. We want to um, build a wallet for onboarding people into the NFT space. All this this kind of stuff. And it's always really about making NFTs accessible to everyone. That's kind of our motto. motto. 
Okay, you already answered a lot of um, topics which we'd like to go into more detail. Let's first look about the one year history. I mean, how did you get started with NFT Maker and, and how were like the first uh, steps from the idea to, the, to this initial, uh, I would say, um, uh, prototype when you launched? Yeah, that was, um, it, it was kind of spontaneously, to be honest. So I was writing my bachelor thesis. I, I was a computer science student at the time. I was writing my bachelor thesis about like a metaverse kind of project on Cardano, actually. And then, you know, this whole thing with NFTs happened, happened there. We saw the first NFTs. Um, Cardano had, had like a large major upgrade. And then I decided, okay, I should, I should use this time to you know, built this little NFT making tool. Um, and I did it in a week together with my co-founder, Fahim, who's, who's our designer now. And um, and then I, I launched it after a week and I thought, okay, it's a nice re little experiment, but it, it blew up overnight. Like we had thousands of NFTs in the first night, essentially. I spent all day debugging and, and fixing bugs in the first night. And uh, and then I decided, okay, maybe, maybe this is something we should... Um, expand from there and we should build more and then i decided to to build more around that build nft maker pro our second product and and hire people and make this into a really big um, thing and now now i'm here with you know more than 20 people working on nft maker products a year later almost a mil million nfts minted so it's been an absolutely amazing and fast journey yeah exciting exciting i also uh, still very good remember when uh, we had first uh, been in touch because I think I reached out to you because I was also so excited about what you're doing with NFT Maker, building kind of this, uh, like like in making it so simple to create mm -hmm. NFTs, um, uploading it, minting it, and then also being on the Cardano blockchain, I think which is a super good advantage uh, and USP for, for you and... Um, so I think that was a right choice. And then what happened from that early prototype? I mean, now a year, it's a working product. How did the community grow? How did you get from, from there to today? Yeah, so much happened. So, you know, we started with, with the small minting tool to basically create one NFT at a time. And then um, we got approached or I got approached by larger projects that wanted to launch on Cardano and they, they didn't really have any place to go to. So I just thought, thought to myself, okay, I want to help these projects. I want to make it easier for people to really build large NFT collections. Um, so I'm going to build a tool to do that. So I built NFT Maker Pro and that is essentially a tool that you can use to really launch not only one NFT or 10 NFTs, but 10,000 or 100,000 if you want, or a million if you want to. Um, so it is like a backend service and it's very open. And um, that is essentially the, the place that people go to when they want to launch large collections, collections on Cardano nowadays. So um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a white label solution, I would say. And it's very easy and accessible to use. So you don't really have to know anything about Cardano about the Cardano programming about all this kind of stuff smart contracts so we try, try to take all the the difficult part and abstract it away from the users of our platforms because we want to make a tool that is really accessible for um, artists for brands for companies who don't want to learn you know how does the blockchain work they just want to create nfts as quickly as possible and yeah. um, not engage with the stuff behind I think, I think that's a good positioning actually where you could come in, uh, really creating this creator economy where uh, people look beyond the technology itself. And I think that's where really mass adoption also could kick in uh, because now you don't think about how Wi-Fi works. It's just like, mm. it's just there. Uh, but at the beginning, I remember in the 90s, the connection to the internet was a, a challenge and <laughs> not, not so easy. Now it's just... Common. I think that's what's happening. Um, I think the exciting part is really creating these work which can be identified um, on, on the blockchain. How would you describe NFT as a for, for you um, a non-fungible token? What is it? That's a very good question. And, uh, you know, I feel like NFTs are mo most often misunderstood in what they are because they are 
they are so much more than they currently are, right? At the moment, you know, NFTs are mostly um, viewed in the public as like bored apes and uh, yeah. crypto punks and all these like projects with with 10,000 NFTs and the community connect, connected to them. And that is really amazing. That's the first step for NFTs um, to be to be part of the mainstream. But NFTs in itself, in, in my opinion, are more than that. They are essentially infrastructure. They're essentially technology that you can use to do whatever. And I, I genuinely believe that we will all be in contact with NFTs on a day-to-day -day basis um, just by doing regular things because you will have to use NFTs and you should be able to use NFTs because they offer tremendous benefits because they offer um, things like like ownership and so on on, on, the, on the blockchain and make it easier for you, for you to transfer ownership. So I can, I can see a world where we... Um, essentially interact with nfts in like a decentralized spotify or a decentralized netflix and we always automatically trade these nfts without even knowing that they exist in the background that they and that they do in the background because as a user i don't i don't care what technology i'm using i don't care if i'm using html or javascript or whatever um, or which blockchain i just want to benefit from the um from the from the things that this technology can can provide me essentially and that is where nfts have to go so they have to not be in the spotlight as nft um, but essentially be used in the background as technology and then we will like everyone will will use nfts all the time that's right i think there the potential is pretty big and you are also in a on a good path of creating unlocking this potential and delivering a product which is still so simple that everybody can use it. I think the, the traction you have done so far uh, is showing that, that uh, you're doing um, the right thing. But um, how would you now describe the goal of NFT Maker? So I, I think it's very simple. Our goal is uh, just making NFTs accessible. That is the overall goal, because at the moment, NFTs are not very accessible. If you want to buy an NFT, you have to go to a crypto exchange like LCX. You have to buy ADA or Ethereum or whatever cryptocurrency you like. Then you have to transfer it out of the exchange into your wallet. Then you have to um, basically use your wallet to go to an, a marketplace, an NFT marketplace like OpenSea, connect your wallet and so on. It's, it's a lot of steps. It's really complicated. It's not something my, my grandmother could do or even uh, you know my mother could do so it's 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 not where it should be from the user experience side of things and not only for the people who want to buy nfts who want to engage with them but also from the perspective of people who want to um, essentially just create nfts or who want to integrate nfts into their development pipeline like in the background for their for their um, dap or whatever they want to build essentially so that is what we aim to make bigger uh, easier and and bigger of course so we really try to take away this abstraction and we started doing that with nft maker version one back in the day where we just made the minting part easier now we try to make this easier with the marketplace and we try to make a marketplace which is particularly easy to use for people who have never even bought an nft ever before so we try to integrate fiat or we will integrate fiat uh, in payment we will integrate our wallet, our onboarding wallet. So a lot of things just to make people's life easier and to get, get mainstream adoption. That's that's mm -hmm. the goal. Yeah, mainstream adoption. I think that's what everybody wants in, in crypto. I have to switch places really quickly because my, my laptop is actually dying and I didn't know okay. this. Sorry okay. for that. Just okay. a second. Great. <laughs> okay back so okay let ready to continue i'm ready okay perfect then you mentioned a couple of products and we want to break it down step by step so with nft maker um i will now ask you uh, go through all the products which are um, mentioned on your website and the, the white paper mm -hmm. uh, and then you can describe it in one or two sentences what it is or even go a little bit deeper if you want Perfect. Um, 
Let's start with NFT Maker Pro. What is NFT Maker Pro? So Pro uh, was our second product, the second product that we built after the first version of NFT Maker. And um, Pro is, you know, as, as the name says, very much designed for professionals, for brands, for companies, and for people who want to launch more than just a handful of NFTs, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it is a product where you can go to, you can register and you can upload 10,000 images or 100,000 images and launch a collection there. But you can also use a Pro API to basically integrate Pro into your system. So if you, for example, develop a video game and you want to integrate NFTs into your video, video game, then you can use our NFT Maker Pro API and just integrate that NFT minting process into your game. And people won't even know that NFT Maker is behind it because it's completely white label. You can do whatever you want with it. And I think that's really powerful because there's nothing else around um, that does this. So you really, like if you were to, to do it any other way, you would have to learn, okay, how does Cardano work? How do these nodes work? How do I even mint an NFT? What do I have to look after for? And we try to take away all that and just focus on making it easy for people who essentially are regular web developers or things like that or regular artists who want to launch the nft collections but uh, don't really have a lot of like blockchain development background and uh, and that is what what pro is about and at the moment it is by far the most used um, nft minting tool on cardano we have around twenty thousand active users we have minted almost a million i keep repeating that number because i'm really proud that we are almost at that point um we, are, we have almost a million NFTs minted through NFT Maker Pro. That's like over over 20% of all of the NFTs on Cardano. And it shows that there was really a need for that. And the next steps for NFT Maker Pro are that we focus on not only integrating the minting part, because we have mastered that already, but also essentially create smart contract integrations. So create trading, create auctions and so on in NFT Maker Pro so that you don't only have the ability to do white label minting, but also can do white label, you know, smart contract trading and stuff like that. Great. Um, so that's NFT Maker Pro. Then what is NFT Maker Marketplace? Yes, so Marketplace is our next upcoming project. Um, it is one of the products that we've been working on for a very long time, for many months now. And it is, as the name says, an NFT marketplace. So it will be a website where you can go to and you will really be able to just buy NFTs at the beginning on Cardano, in later stages on many different blockchains. And essentially, yeah, we focus on the user experience. So we create this marketplace to not not only satisfy the community that is already there and that is already collecting NFTs and trading NFTs, but essentially bring more, be more people onto the ship. That is our goal. We want to be the entry point for artists, for people new in the community, and, um, and we focus very much on user experience and we try to really push that. And the cool thing, you know, the cool thing about NFT Maker Marketplace is that it's completely built on top of NFT Maker Pro. So Pro is basically the technological foundation. And then on top is NFT Maker Marketplace and many other things. So in theory, what you could do is you could go ahead and build your own marketplace, which maybe focus on, I don't know, Pokemon NFT trading cards or something like that, like a white label marketplace and use the exact same technology that we are using for our marketplace. So there are a lot of, um, you know, a lot of good things there that you can use and a lot of smart contracts that we will integrate in the NFT Maker Marketplace, but also have in NFT Maker Pro for other people to use. So next up is NFT Maker Wallet. How would you describe this? Yeah, so, you know, there are many wallets out there, many, many, many wallets. Um, and we don't want to compete in this in this wallet game. We won't, don't want to be the next MetaMask or the next... I don't know, on Cardano, it's Nami wallet or Typhoon wallet or any of these wallets. So our goal is really to always make the onboarding process easier. And for that, what we need is uh, we need to have a wallet that can interact with fiat payment. So essentially, the idea would be, okay, you want, you want to go to the NFT Maker Marketplace, you want to buy your first NFT, 
and you want to pay with PayPal or with your credit card, with whatever, um, then you do that. You go through all the steps. You pay via fiat. And then, you know, where does the NFT land? Like, what happens to the NFT? You don't really have a wallet because it's your first ever NFT. So you need to essentially figure out where to send this NFT. So what we try to do is we want to integrate a wallet into the NFT maker marketplace and make it super easy to access. So we don't have any of these uh, pass phrases. We don't have any of these like difficult steps that you have to fulfill to create your first wallet. But instead, it's going to be a super lightweight web wallet. And it will be very easy for us to use fiat payment to essentially allow this direct sale of NFTs and then immediately send it to this new wallet for the user. And it's all going to be like a super nice uh, user flow. Okay, that sounds exciting and also I think very useful for the user, especially for the new ones coming in to have that uh, fiat gateway as a payment gateway as well. Um, and then, but when I look at your ecosystem, there's also the NFT maker stake pool. What's that? Yeah, so the stake pool um, is a Cardano specific thing. So on Cardano, the, the network is not a proof of work, but instead it's proof of stake. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, the stake pools are creating the blocks, they're validating the transactions and so on. And um, the stake pool on Cardano is very important because it is, is essentially the Cardano network. Like Cardano is simply a combination of all the different stake pools. And for us, I personally believe that the stake pools are Cardano's hidden power um, because we essentially can use the stake pool as like a membership service. So people will be able to delegate to our stake pool or actually they are already able to delegate to our stake pool. The stake pool is already live. And by delegating, they earn ADA every five days, like with every, every other stake pool. But on the same time, they will also be able to, to earn some additional benefits, like for example, small amounts of NMaker token, um, that we distribute to this through the stake pool, but also other other perks like reduced fees on the marketplace, reduced fees on minting tools, and so on. So the stake pool will essentially be a how do you call it a an additional benefit or like a, the glue between all these projects essentially. Mm -hmm. And then um, you also mentioned the uh, NFT Maker Game Launchpad. What is the game launchpad? Yes, so that's that's one of our very long-term projects. Um, we do see that you know crypto and gaming is a perfect fit, but there are many problems with current crypto gaming. So you know I, I'm a big gamer. I used to play video games all the time. Um, I wanted to become a game developer before I started with this whole uh, crypto thing. So that is very dear to my heart. And I think that there are certain problems that cryptocurrencies can and NFTs in, in particular can solve for the gaming industry, but it's not the problems that the gaming industry and the crypto industry are currently focusing on. So at the moment we see essentially loot boxes as NFTs in video games, and that's it. That's the extent of it. And maybe we see a little bit of land sales and so on, and that's all nice and that well, but um, you know, the, the gaming community is not super happy about that because it's just not, not that interesting. Like they, it, it's not any super cool benefit for them. So what we try to do is we try to find a way to make NFTs and gaming really fit. And we try to solve this whole, this whole DRM, so digital rights management issue that we have at the moment with gaming through NFTs. So at the moment, when you buy a game, you have to go to Steam, you have to go to, I don't know, uh, Ubisoft, you have to go to all these different launchers and uh, you have to have like 10 programs on your PC just to play a game, which is absurd. Because, of course, every, every one of these publishers, they don't want to give away any market share or any percentage of their sales to other, other platforms. And then you are essentially locked into their system, into their platform. And that's not the crypto way. That's not the decentralized way. That's not good. We need to basically open this up. We need to use NFTs as the certificate of ownership over that game and use these nfts to make it available on all the platforms and not only lock it into for example steam so i think there's a real benefit there and it's also a great benefit for the publishers of course on the secondary market because they can suddenly benefit from secondary markets which is previously previously not a thing um so it's 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 great and it solves some problems and that's 
in the direction that we want to go in. And we will take this um, very slowly. So it's a long-term plan for sure, but we have already um, like a working prototype out there and we will hopefully announce some stuff there soon. Okay, yeah, this makes sense, uh, especially for the long-term uh, vision. Um, absolutely kind of the gaming market is a huge uh, market which you can tap into and there's already the kind of a blockchain gaming uh, development going on. Um, so that makes sense. Now, when I look at your product portfolio as a whole, I mean, there is such an ecosystem needs an instrument where you can like pay fees with or uh, do transactions or use all these benefits. So a token makes sense. Tell us about the um, N. MKR token. <laughs> you're the you're the only person saying NMKR. Um, I usually call it NMaker, but <laughs> NMKR is also fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So essentially, you know, we thought very early on about a token, and then we decided against the token a year ago because we felt we weren't ready yet. So we took our time and we thought about it very long and hard, and thought, okay, how do we make a token that actually makes sense for our community? that mm -hmm. actually brings benefit, benefits to the holders. And now we have come to this point where we think, okay, now it's, it's really time for our token. Um, and the, the goal of the Endmaker token is essentially to combine all these different products to be the glue between the different products and to give benefits to hopefully every single person holding an NFT on Cardano. That's, that's the goal. Um, we have many different utility cases. One of them has to do with verification of ownership. So we want to tackle the problem of um, you know, fraud and fake art and stolen art from other chains or maybe stolen art from, from Twitter or Instagram or DeviantArt, which is one of the biggest problems that NFTs at the moment have mm -hmm. through our token and through our decentralized governance system. And we want to give really the power into the people, into into the people's hand, hands, into the community's hands and have everyone participate and benefit from our evolving ecosystem. So we want to make NFT Maker into one of the biggest players of NFTs, not only on Cardano, but like blockchain wide, um, like all, all the blockchains included. And for that, we, we need this token and we are launching this token and it's really... Um, it's going to be amazing. I think there are, you know, there are 79 pages of white paper out there about the utility cases. I can go into them for a long time, but um, I just, <laughs> I recommend you to check out nftmaker.io slash token for, for the specifics. Exciting. And it's not just any token, I think. Like, first of all, your like NFT maker and your whole team and, and the company behind really shows how mature the crypto industry has become. And um, how it evolved from this ICO hype in 2017 to now, because you have not developed a token with a white paper and then like building the, the product later. You've built up a community, you've proven that NFT maker, like people want it, a million NFTs have been minted. I mean, that's a demand which is uh, needs to be uh, kind of answered in the market. So that's, that's where you're answering. Uh, with your product and uh, really building something people want and now you're entering with the token i think that's a very smart move and again like it shows how mature the crypto industry as a whole is and then the second key element is it's not a, a, an ethereum erc20 token it's a cardano native token which is very exciting at lcx we have been implementing uh, cardano nodes since I don't know, quite some time over a year or something like that with full ADA support. And uh, now we are supporting also your token, the NMaker or NMKR token. Um, why Cardano? Good question. Uh, Very yeah. good question. Um, yeah, so, you know, Cardano, as you know. Why, like everything, like I think you're a big believer, but what are the benefits and why Cardano blockchain? Yeah. So as you know, I, I was a computer science student before, before this whole thing. So, you know, I look at blockchain technology and, and all this um, crypto stuff from a like technology standpoint. Um, and I, I just chose Cardano at the beginning because it was the best tech out there. Um, that's pretty clear. 
you know, it's all peer reviewed, it's all super secure and functional programming. So it is a very solid foundation to build upon and you can be safe and you know, okay, this will scale in, in a few years. This will, will be amazing. And, um, and that's how I got into it. And that's why Cardano is the first choice. But there are also some other really interesting use cases or really interesting market potentials for Cardano that I want to point out. And that is essentially that Cardano is one of the biggest blockchains out there just from a sheer amount of users. So Cardano has, I think, the third largest user base in off crypto, if you don't count Dogecoin. So it's directly after, after uh, Bitcoin, of course, and Ethereum. And maybe it's on the same place uh, approximately with Solana. Um, so there are many, many people on Cardano. That's the thing. There are so many people on Cardano, but it's also really hard to build on Cardano because it is a functional programming, because it is a completely different model to Ethereum. It's all very foreign to, to many developers. So mm -hmm. us building on Cardano was very hard for us, of course, but it's, it might be even harder for other people to replicate. And we were able to capitalize on the fact that it's so hard to build on Cardano because no one else is doing it and there are still all these users. And everyone, like everyone is excited for a Cardano and they want to use it and they want to buy NFTs, they want to use the DEXs, they want to have all this crazy stuff. But there are very few people who are actually able to deliver on these promises. And we were one of the four, first in the NFT space and that is our, our big um, you know, advantage to all the competitors. And now, like with the Cardano blockchain as an advantage, I do see this advantage also at your product. So how is the NFT maker technical infrastructure built? Yeah, so um, it's a it's a very very complex technical infrastructure. So it's going to be hard to fill this in uh, quickly. But the idea is that NFT Maker Pro is the foundation for everything. So NFT Maker Pro is like a backend service. Um, it is an API. And it also has a user graphical interface that you can visit. So you can go to the website, register there. And the idea for us is that we build NFT Maker Pro in a way so that it benefits us because we are building the marketplace. We are helping people launch the NFT projects. We are doing all these different things and doing white label drops, white label you know, marketplaces, all this kind of stuff. So we need to have a lot of great functionality in our API from NFT Maker Pro. And by doing this, by building this tool, and by also making it accessible to other people, we are giving the, the tools and the power that we are using and creating for ourselves to into the hands of everyone else. That's, that's kind of the approach. So if you are building an NFT marketplace, you can go to NFT Maker Pro and you can use everything that we have for our marketplace to build your own marketplace. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's like the infrastructure. It's like, um, AWS or something like that, essentially. It's really, really interesting also because we have seen so many things where we never would have thought about um, building this because it's like it's so random or it's so experimental. And then people just come and they tell us, okay, look at this. I built this uh, with your tools and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Or we just go to YouTube and we suddenly see like 100 tutorials about how to use the API from really experienced um, programmers and stuff like that, or people developing open source projects on top of NFT Maker Pro. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been really great watching that, and um, yeah, and and now we are building our own products on top of it. Wow! Yeah, exciting. I think um, at first when I looked at NFT Maker, I thought like that's like the open sea on Cardano or like an eBay for NFTs on on Cardano, but when you now talk about building um, the AWS uh, key infrastructure for NFTs, then the, the vision expanded actually, and that the horizon um, like comes much much um, closer or far away actually. Um, so, uh, but all of this vision and all these products you had been described, I think you can't build on your own. Tell us about the NFT Maker team. Yeah, I, I definitely can't build it on, on my own. There's a really large team behind it and um, some amazing people. Like I've been genuinely blessed to have so many amazing people in, in the team very, very quickly. So, you know, there are there is, for example, uh, Anne-Christine, who we met on our NFT Maker journey. Uh, she is our CFO. 
and she came from a more corporate background. So she worked for Porsche in the past. She worked for many great companies and she has all the, this information about how to fund a startup, how to do like all this, um, all this finance stuff that I have no idea about. She, she's the person for that. And she, she has been a vital, vital part of the, of the management team essentially since, uh, since many months now. Then we have uh, Christian, who's, who's my COO. So he's my, my second hand. And he has um, also been just incredible by, because he, he comes from the business background, which is a very unusual background, I would say, especially in crypto. But it's proven to be so strong since he, he can talk to, to people on a completely different level than I can. He can go to someone and explain from a from like a film and agency background and, and, and tell them, oh, wow, um, you know, NFTs are really what you need in your process. And, um, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard. People come to us all the time with, with random ideas on, can we integrate NFTs into that? Can we integrate NFTs into that? And I, I don't know the answer. I don't see the immediate use case because I have to think about it also. And then he's just there and he immediately knows, okay, that's amazing. We can use NFTs here for this, this, and this, and then we do it. So it's been just uh, incredible working with him as well. And he's been there all the time. And then, you know, there are many others, like for example, uh, Fahim, who I founded NFT Maker version one with. Um, he's been our, our graphic designer. Um, he has uh, also some, some cool experience in his past. We, we used to go to, to school together, then our paths split up and now they're coming together again to, to build this project. And he has like a team of designers working there. And we have uh, many amazing developers like Max and um, Sasha. So we have, like, I would say we have a really strong foundation in, in our team with, with great, like with great vision of where NFTs should go in the long term. And that's really about it, about what I'm, I'm trying to achieve as well. Like uh, we don't think about NFTs as what they are right now, right? We think about NFTs as what they should be and we try really hard to push to push you know us to go there and to push the whole nft scene to be more experimental to do and try more things out and that is um what combines us all essentially i keep saying essentially today <laughs> yeah and i think you have a powerful team behind but there's also a powerful community and now you're launching the end maker token to um, include the community as well. Tell us more about the Endmaker token sale, what's going on, several stages, um, how is it planned and, and what's going on right now? Yes, so the, for the Endmaker token, it's very important that we distribute the token as widely as possible. Um, so we have many different distribution mechanisms and the second thing which is really important for us is not only that we distribute it as widely as possible, but that we also um, are very secure from a regulatory standpoint. That's why we have partnered with LCX. And may maybe you were going to ask me that later on anyways, but I'm, I'm going to start with this. Um, we, we are partnering with LCX because we want to have like a 100% bulletproof regulatory framework. We don't want to fall in, into any traps You know, in five years when we find out, oh, we we missed these rules. Um, now, you know, this whole token thing um, is, is essentially not legal or has some problems and we have to figure out how to solve them. So we want to do things right from the beginning and LCX is really providing that uh, for us. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing from the token sale perspective um, specifically is we are launching in three different phases. So we have had a private sale, which is sold out at this point. Um, with some strategic investors from the Cardano community, from, you know, the people building on Cardano and from, uh, you know, some mainstream investors. And then we will have a public ICO through LCX on lcx.com um, where everyone can participate. You have to go through a KYC process and it's a very, you know, it's, it's a, a regular and, uh, ICO essentially. And it's very regulated and it's very safe and secure. So that's great. And then in the future, we will also dis distribute the token through other mechanisms. So, for example, through the stake pool. But for now, you know, the biggest thing that we are doing um, is our ICO for LCX. Yeah, and I think the countdown has started. Yes. It's April 18th, 6 p.m. Central European time when uh, the sale will start. 
we can recommend that you uh, are signing up right now already to go through the KYC process. You can deposit your funds there already and get ready. Um, when you click on token sale from your dashboard, you can see the countdown there as well. So um, there's a question here also from, from the community here. I think you uh, briefly answered it already, but let's raise it here to make it very clear. So. Rishab is uh, asking, why did NFT Maker choose LCX? Yes, um, you know, there are many different options out there. So there are many, many launch pads and there are many DEXs and so on. And you can start a token very easily. I mean, that's what we do with NFT makers. We sell NFTs, right? Um, it, we could also sell fungible tokens, but that's not what it's about. For, we, we try to like a lot of these token sales have issues from you know, the legal standpoint and the regulatory standpoint. And we try to avoid that. We try to be 100% secure because what we are building here is for the future. We want to be there for the future and have a solid foundation that we can build upon. So we need to be sure that what we are doing right now is secure and will be like a good foundation to build our products and our whole community and the whole ecosystem upon. So uh, we talked to LCX and we found out more about LCX and LCX has been nothing but, you know, super helpful and has an amazing history and has an amazing platform. And the good thing about LCX is that it is one of the very, very few exchanges out in the world that has so many, you know, ticks so many regulatory uh, check, check marks and has such a solid footing in the like legal side of things that it really helps us to just be secure. So we have spoken to all our lawyers. We spent many, many months and uh, also a lot of, you know, nerves and money on talking with lawyers, on uh, preparing this whole token sale, on getting the documents right, on getting token assessments and this, all, this whole stuff um, that many other token sales don't even care about or bother about. But I think that is one of the biggest mistakes in the in the crypto scene. You have to care about these things because they are real. You cannot just randomly go ahead and launch a token and, and make some money with it in Europe without caring about the regulatory side of things. So we we do things right. Um, maybe that's my German blood in me, but <laughs> you know that's why we chose LCX. Okay, yeah, I, I'm totally on your side. I think that's very important as the industry emerges to be more powerful and as it gets um, older and, and stronger also, that's super important. And with your token set, I think um, I totally agree. It's super important to get that done in the right way. Um, and here probably to explain to the community um, what LCX is doing, we're not only selling the token at lcx.com, but legally speaking, we are the token issuer on behalf of NFT Maker. So we are taking the legal risks. We have notified the Financial Market Authority in Liechtenstein about the token sale. LCX had been responsible also to publish a basic information document which outlined all the risks, opportunities, what are the functionalities of the token, also outlines about the product, um, the team, uh, also about LCX and so on. And then um, another document, which are the terms of um, the Endmaker token sale, um, also laying out all the details. Uh, this gives legal clarity. Yeah? At least you, you may agree or not to these terms or whatever, but at least you know everybody is fully informed. And this is what regulation and policymakers want. You know, there are many uh, financial products out there which are super risky, derivatives, um, uh, for example, or any like hedge funds or funds of funds or way where you don't really understand what it's all about. But they also have to publish all these documents. And I think that's uh, where we make it very clear. And I think uh, the Endmaker token is not that complicated to understand. It has clear, clear benefits. And we make it very clear in terms of um, how it will be issued to the market. So that's our responsibility. And um, we yeah, went through the process in the last couple of months. Now you can find on the website the basic information, the terms of Endmaker sale. You can find the white paper. There's a summary also, which our team published uh, all about you. So I think um, like giving all the transparency here. So um, 
There's one particular question here from the community, which I find interesting is, um, what are here from uh, Bandhavi, what are the criteria followed before selecting the company for a token sale? So that's on the side of LCX. And I think it's also important for NFT maker because we get bombarded with a lot of product projects from all over the world. In general, you don't need to be in Liechtenstein registered to, to um, start the token sale with us. It can be a company anywhere and we are issuing the token under the Liechtenstein laws. That's the blockchain act. And that's what we're doing now with NFT Maker. And that's why um, we get a lot of requests and there are a lot of projects out there, like I would say 80% we have to decline because either they're too small, they're too early, they don't um, fit in our quality um, uh, kind of checklist. And um, in this case, in F NFT Maker, I think you filed all the check marks. It's um, you have a fantastic team. There's a working product. There's a strong community behind. So, and then the token also as a utility token completely makes sense as an ecosystem token. And that's why um, we have like all green check marks and green lights on, on all our uh, criteria. Um, and that's why we had been actually uh, over, I think, a longer period of time in touch, being in touch um, about your token and your plans and how we could help and everything. So it was kind of a win-win situation, I think, on both sides. But nevertheless, like following or the selection process is um, is complicated with us uh, because we uh, are also in the same boat. We are liable for the things we do as, a, as LCX uh, is this regulated company. So that's why we have to be selective. And we, of course, want to present projects which are exciting, which are um, successful and which are uh, loved by our community as well, because a lot of uh, our users will also support NFT Maker in the future. So Patrick, now over to kind of the, the key elements, how to participate, how to register and how to get the and make a token. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Uh, you just have to register on lcx.com. Um, I you know, I recommend you to do your KYC there as well, so you that, that so that you're prepared for the token sale and that you can ape right into it when it launches. Um, yeah, and that's it. You know, just regis registering the, it, registering there. Wow, now my German is really acting up. And um, and then you're ready. You just have to wait. Um, you can see the countdown as Monty mentioned um, on on the website. It's right there. You can see, okay, only five days remaining. And then once the countdown is over, you click on it. And then there's a big fat buy button and you just click that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. That's how it's done. Um, let's explain a little bit um, in, in more detail. So let me share this um, here. So this is the website lcx.com. Um, when you have registered, went through the KYC process, you will see the button uh, from, the, from the dashboard and everywhere, navigation, token sale. And then you'll find the N Maker token sale here with all the details. Um, you can choose the currency you want to purchase with. Uh, of course, Ader is, is one of them, um, but you can also uh, deposit uh, Euro with a SEPA payment, Ethereum, USDC and so on, and then purchase the Endmaker token. There's the countdown has been now started here. Um, and um, yeah, then you, what you also see are all the details about the project again. So there are, uh, it's a Cardano native token. Uh, there the token economics are listed there, the road, uh, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit. And then team, uh, as well as also legal aspects. So here you can go into the basic information, uh, download or we online and so on. So you can uh, read all details. What we always recommend: do your own research. Um, it's exciting and also very interesting to dive into details about NFT maker and that's what we recommend uh, to understand what you're doing and so on. But the process to sign up and get um, Part of the Endmaker community is simple. Again, register, 
go through KYC, deposit funds, be ready, and then uh, the public sale starts on April 18th in five days. Yeah, four days and some hours. Exciting. Very exciting. So close. <laughs> so I think we've explained the key elements about the token itself. Um, now let's talk about the roadmap. What's ahead? How does the future look for NFT Maker? There's so much ahead. Um, you know, we have a lot of like smaller and a few uh, bigger things that we have planned. I think the biggest one directly after the token sale is our marketplace launch. So that's uh, what we spoke about earlier. Um, we, we've been working on this marketplace for many, many months and it's, it's really good. I'm really excited about it. The team has been working on it like nonstop. And now we're at a point where we're almost ready for release. So it's only going to be a few more weeks or months um, and then, and then we will release the marketplace and we really um, aim to set a new standard for NFT marketplaces on Cardano. And after that, you know, there are also many other things on the roadmap, like, for example, we will integrate fiat payment um, and, and our wallet, as, as I mentioned earlier, and we will have, um, you know, different blockchain supported. So we are looking into the Comida at the moment. That's um, one of the Cardano sidechains. It's also a Solana sidechain. It's, it's really new and really exciting. But we're also looking into more of the layer one blockchains like Solana, like Ethereum. And we will have all of this, you know, in NFT Maker long term. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And there are a lot of like detailed, you know, smaller things that you can find on the roadmap. I'm not going to go too much into those, but um, I really recommend you to check out the roadmap in detail. It's, it's very exciting. At least I think so. Um, when I was writing it down, I... I couldn't believe, you know, how much we have already done and how much we are still going to do. Um, and you can find more, find out more about the roadmap either on lcx.com or even on NFT Maker.io. And what is very special also about NFT Maker is it's a European digital uh, future unicorn um, company, I would say. So it's not coming out of. Uh, Silicon Valley. And that's um, something which uh, I'd been noticing since the uh, like last couple of years, and especially with the blockchain industry. I've seen that the uh, kind of the past 20 years or the, the, the early internet and digital movement had been mainly driven out of these technology hubs like Silicon Valley. And uh, a lot of European Entrepreneurs also moved and shifted over to Silicon Valley, especially in San Francisco, and opened their companies there or um, flipped the companies from being Europe um, over there. But now it's other. It's the other way around. First of all, U.S. doesn't have this legal infrastructure, which we are using. Liechtenstein is really um, it's a small country, but it's a role model at, at the moment in Europe. And we also had of these like Mika regulations, which is coming from European Parliament. So a lot of these um, elements there are inspired by the Blockchain Act in Liechtenstein now, which gives us some, some advantages. But then also there is this um, like European hubs now, Berlin, um, Zoo, Crypto Valley and everything. Uh, how do you see this development and um, the advantage you have as a, as a European startup? I think I think it's great. I feel like you know crypto is very big in Europe, especially as you mentioned in in Zurich and Zug and uh, Switzerland and Liechtenstein. There are all these like little hubs where you can go to as a company. Like we are in Switzerland as well, um, mm -hmm. and you know the the European countries have had like a difficult time to keep up with you know U the US and Asia and uh, many other places around the world but now with crypto they actually are almost on the same level and they are actually in some in some ways um, taking the charge especially from the legal side right mm -hmm. so i think it's a great advantage for us to be here and i think it's also really good to to see this development happening in europe because that strengthens europe as a continent but it also you know always the the place where it's easiest to do to, to create the future is the place that wins in the end. And for Cardano and crypto is about enabling everyone to participate, right? So it's going to start in Europe, but it's going to expand over to 
of course, Asia, it's going to start expand over to all these other places. And it's also going to expand over to Africa, which is you know, one of Cardano's biggest um, target groups, essentially. So the goal is really to get everyone on board. And it's just about finding the regulatory framework to really get it started and set these role models and prove to the regulators around the world that it's not that bad, that Bitcoin is not a bad thing, that NFTs are actually a good thing and so on. And once that has been done, um, I think we'll just see this trend increase. And in the future, you know, everyone is going to hold crypto and everyone is going to interact with it um, on a daily basis. And hopefully everyone is going to interact with NFT maker on a daily basis. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, you, you made a big point here that there's so much going on in Europe at the moment. Uh, for example, with the technology integration of the Cardano blockchain at LCX, we are now engaging closely with the team in Zug, Switzerland, um, so-called Crypto Valley. Uh, so Cardano Foundation also is, is registered based there. And it's not only a letterbox, it's like a real office, the real, like yep. there's a core team there. And then, of course, as, as others, they also have teams decentralized. And another key hub is really Berlin as a startup city, of course, in, in Germany, but also Paris or London or something really developing very quickly. And I do feel that this um, movement here of digital money, blockchain, NFTs, the, the next big thing is this time coming out of Europe. Um, I've just looked at the chat here again, and there are still some questions around the token, I think, which we should um, use the opportunity to um answer um here first of all as usps bx is asking what will make uh, and maker stand out as other developers copy it uh, the tag or copy the platform i assume that's a question yeah that's that's a good question um first of all it's not it's not that easy to copy the tag so you know uh, copying the tag sounds very easy but it's it's actually not uh we have a lot of tech and you you also couldn't simply copy all the all the Google tech at this point. Um, sometimes the tech just gets complicated. But of course, you know, um, all of our smart contracts are open source. A lot of like our tools are open source. So it will be possible for people to, to copy them and, and use them. But one thing they cannot copy is um, our focus on user experience. So that is our number one priority. We want to make NFTs accessible. I keep repeating this. Um, but you know, that is something which is really hard to do. And if we have the easiest user flow, like we currently have for minting NFTs, then the users will come to us. And yeah. that, is, that is our advantage, I think. And then around that, everything else evolves, the community, the governance, and so on. Adi is asking, how many users does NFT Maker currently have? And where do you see these numbers in a couple of years or so? Yes, so um, NFT Maker Pro has 20,000 users. And the thing about this number, you know, it's only 20,000, is that all of these users are professional users. So we have 20,000 users and we have 15,000, I would say, collections. So almost every single user that registers on NFT Maker Pro creates an actual NFT collection. And these are not like small collections. These are collections with thousands and thousands of NFTs most of the time. So it's like a... It's like a very strong community of either developers or brands or companies or artists. And that is only B2B essentially. And now with our NFT maker marketplace coming up, we expect this number to be at least 10 times that in a very short amount of time, because then we can actually talk not only to the artists, but also to the end customer. Then uh, another question here from Cam asking how many NMaker tokens can each individual person purchase during the public sale? There's no cap there, so you can purchase how many you want. Of course, there's, there's a cap, a total cap. Uh, and there's yeah. a minimum, I think $500 um, as, as a minimum purchase, uh, but uh, it's a first come, first serve. Uh, another question here. From Adi, how many rounds of sale will be available on LCX? What are the lockups? Yes, so there are two rounds of sale. Uh, one of the one is the pri private sale, which is already almost concluded. Um, we sold out very quickly in the private sale, and then the next sale is going to be the public sale. 
Um, and there we have a lockup period of six months. So 180 days with like a daily unlock vesting schedule. Mm -hmm. Then next question from Ro Weber. What utilities does the token have and what would result in value accrued for the token? Yes, so um, we have one major utility case. I'm going to focus on this one because it's probably the biggest one. And that the, the idea is essentially to reduce fraud and to reduce stolen art in the NFT scene and to do that all through decentralized governance. So let's say, for example, you... You're an artist and you want to sell your NFTs. So you go to the NFT maker marketplace, you upload your art and you sell the NFT and you want to prove, okay, I'm really the person that I am and this is really legit art. So you, what you can do is essentially have a, a, an artist verification score, like a trust score in your profile. And that trust score is how many NFTs you are locking inside of a smart contract and are essentially staking them there. So you say, okay, I put 1,000 Endmaker tokens into the smart contract, so I have a trust score of 1,000. And then when you go ahead and you do something bad, so for example, you, you take someone else's art from Twitter, um, just copy-paste it into NFT Maker and sell that as an NFT and make some money off of that, then you can be punished for that because other people will recognize that. They will say, oh, this is actually not, not the person owning this art. This is just a random guy minting this as an NFT. And they will report you in a decentralized manner through our token and say, okay, this guy has done some, something bad. So let's punish him. Let's take away some of his trust scores. So some of his end maker tokens. And then we go into like a decentralized voting mechanism where you have to... Um, vote and where you, where you can say okay this report is correct this report is incorrect and you will be rewarded for participating in this vote and so on so it's like a game theory kind of mechanism to self-govern the marketplace but not only the marketplace because this system can be adapted for everything you can think really large scale the system is essentially a way to to remove you know, um, platforms like Airbnb or eBay, which are just platforms for a trust score. So you create a decentralized trust score for, for whatever you want. And that, that is the grand vision. Okay, yeah. And it's a big vision and it's a big problem also because um, consumers are con confused. People are just taking the, like, the image of the NFT, uploading it somewhere else, creating a fake... NFTs um, and that that's kind of a big big uh, problem at the moment, uh, where people and consumers who would like to purchase the real thing are uh, just like yeah doesn't have this trust score. So that's that's a key uh, element. And then I do see also um, this connection to the physical world. Now there are some uh, shoe uh, stores or shoe retailers who are creating uh, products which are. Um, connected to the shoe itself, like an NFT, um, creating the authenticity of the of the product, or um, as what we are doing at Timens.com is tokenized diamonds, kind of real world diamonds, putting them in a vault uh, in a secure environment, and then making them tradable as being the, the full owner in the NFT. So I think these connections um, might be also very interesting to explore. Um, but there are um, uh, yeah, and then related to this discussion, there's a question here from Lapin Malin. Will you try to make NFT Maker ahead of the curve by expanding NFT Maker beyond 10K collection style NFTs? And if so, how? Yes, uh, also a very good question. That is exactly what we are doing um, already. So for us, you know, 10K drops are nice, but it's not, it's not the future of NFTs. Um, it, it's just a part of what NFTs can do. And we try to do things beyond that. So what we have done in particular in the past is we have onboarded a lot of like galleries, um, like physical galleries where we, where we have super high value art, like for example, Andy Warhol pieces, which sometimes are worth millions. And we fractionalize and tokenize these pieces. So we take this one piece, which is worth a million and we divide it into a thousand smaller pieces and sell these thousand smaller pieces so that multiple people can have ownership over that piece. 
-hmm. So that's what we do on the art side. But what we also try to do is we really try to push um, NFTs as a utility case, not really as an art only thing. So we, we want to um, have NFTs as you know, proof of ownership for many different digital, but also real goods. And we integrate NFTs into the life cycle of products. And the way that this can be done through NFT Maker is that we have built NFT Maker Pro. We have this NFT Maker API. So you can just go ahead and use this API and integrate it into your game or in, into your car production, I don't know, line or into whatever you want. It's just an API. It's an open endpoint for regular developers to integrate it. So we are prepared to do that and prepared to bring it to, to this next level and away from the 10K drops. Okay. There's a, also a question here, another one in regarding to blockchains from Nordin. Why don't you replicate Cardano protocol instead of building it on it uh, for more adoption? I have to say this is a very weird question. <laughs> um, that, that's like saying like, uh, why why don't you just replicate Berlin instead of living in Berlin? <laughs> um, that that it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Like replicating Cardano doesn't make any any sense for us. The users are on Cardano. Cardano has amazing technology. Um, there's no reason for us to replicate Cardano. We want to be in the Cardano ecosystem. We want to be in in many different blockchains and uh, blockchain agnostic, right? So I don't see any reason to to replicate Cardano. Um, also, you know, you can't underestimate how much work it is to build Cardano. Cardano has thousands of people working on it. Um, like, you know, we, we are a great team, but we're only 20 people. So we can't just, can't just create the next Cardano. No, but um, I think the question hits um, a key point when you look at the uh, previous ICO boom, everybody was forking the the other blockchains like Ethereum fork and Bitcoin forks yep. and, and whatever. And they were just copying the source codes as it's mainly often uh, open source. But um, now I think that the whole technology has grown up um, and, and with Cardano, I would say um, uh, Celo, for example, also pretty impressive blockchain or um, I don't know, um, some others are really uh, evolving and it's hard, not only hard to copy, but also hard to maintain and run such an ecosystem. And Cardano uh, ecosystem, as you have explained, is so powerful. Um, you said one of the biggest communities out there, biggest communities also in terms of developers. And that's something which is... Um, yeah, basically impossible to just like copy in a couple of months, but rather um, using these as an advantage for NFT maker and um, giving this advantage also to the users because it's much faster, cheaper to use and so on. Exactly. Um, but nevertheless, related to that, Andy is asking, will NFT maker move onto different chains or um, will it stay on Cardano? Yes, we will definitely move uh, into other chains as well. Our first love is always Cardano. Cardano is, um, in my opinion, you know, the, the best chain. Uh, that's that's what I grew up with, essentially, in the NFT scene or in the crypto scene. And I, I think Cardano has an extremely promising future, and it's going to be a major, major player, maybe the biggest um, out there in the crypto scene. But, of course, you know, we are moving towards cross-chain like everyone else is. The whole industry is moving towards cross-chain. As an end user, you don't really care. Is this on Cardano? Is this on Ethereum? Like, I just want to buy this piece, this NFT. I want to use this product. Um, so like, I, I shouldn't have to care about which chain it is. And that's really where we tr want to put the user experience into. Yeah, so um, I think some are saying thanks. Thanks for answering here. Um, thanks for taking my, my question and thanks for response. Um, Patrick, here's another one, tricky one. Uh, what price of NMaker token do you predict? Hundred dollars, <laughs> thousand? A thousand dollars would be insane. That would be a very hard part. Uh, uh, no, I, I can't. I can't predict the price. I don't know. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. I like all I do is build products, 
build them for people to use them. And then, you know, when you build great products, the price will follow always. Yeah. So I think like we can't do any, any price predictions, we typically also never comment on any prices, but what we have described now in this hour, even longer session is to create, explain the value uh, of the token itself, explain the value of NFT maker. And I think then, then the community decides how much the, it is valued, like how much you can do with it. And then it, it like the, it's a marketplace tokens will be traded in LCX exchange and other exchanges as well. So um, that, that will be defined by the market. Yeah. So to round it up, I, I think here, there's a good last comment um, from Gester here, looking forward to the future of both. So um, for NMaker, for NFT maker, for LCX, I think there's a bright future um, to sum up. I think, just as a reminder, you can register at LCX to join the NMaker token sale. You can also go to lcx.com slash insights to get all the details around NMaker. There's a deep dive, all you need to know about NFT Maker published. You can uh, follow Patrick on Twitter or join the NFT Maker community. Just visit nftmaker.io. Um, and yeah, so the token sale will start April 18th then um, I assume it will be sold out quickly. Then the token will be listed at LCX exchange as the, the first venue. And then you probably go on other exchanges as well, but there's a trading venue also early on for all the token holders. It's exciting. Patrick, Very anything exciting. else? Not much else. Um, thank you so much for hosting me here. I, I love this one comment in the chat. Uh, now Monty can give us an LCX price prediction. Very funny. Um, <laughs> but besides that, you know, I'm, I'm just extremely excited about the sale. Um, I think it's the first step of many into the NFT maker future and into the NFT future in general. And, um, and I couldn't be happier to, to be partnering with LCX. So, you know, it will be big. Um, it's going to be amazing. And I, I hope everyone here participates, please check out NFT maker. IO, um, and yeah, join our telegram group, join, uh, or Discord, join us on Twitter, wherever you like, essentially. We post the information everywhere. Um, and then participate in the in the token sale. LCX.com, registering and doing the KYC. And then that's it. Perfect. So onwards and upwards. Thanks for watching. Talk soon. Yeah. Bye-bye.